Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone out there is doing well. My name is Mike and today we're getting into a reaction for the film A Few Good Men from 1992. Uh, much like my reaction to Last of the Mohicans, um, I've technically seen this movie, but I was too young to appreciate the concepts of a drama film. And the only thing I remember from this was uh, Nicholson's famous line. I think everyone knows it. Or if they haven't seen the movie, they've heard this. Uh, you can't handle the truth. I know it's a courtroom drama from a military perspective. So um, this will be the first time having a courtroom drama reaction on the channel. And it's another military movie. I've had a few of those on the channel. I was in the military myself, so uh, always a fan of military movies, even if it's from a courtroom perspective. Um, let's just talk about who stars in this. We're going to read the synopsis. Uh, this stars Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, Demi Moore, or is it Demi? I, I'm not sure. I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Kevin Bacon, Kevin Pollack, James Marshall, uh, J.T. Walsh, and Kiefer Sutherland. All-star cast in this one, man. Uh, directed by Rob Reiner, too. So, this got an 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. That is from the critics. Uh, audience gave it an 89. This is one of those rare movies that has, uh, almost across the board, uh, similar ratings. That's pretty good, man. So, I'm going to read the synopsis real quick, and then we're just going to jump right into it. So, Lieutenant Daniel Caffey, Tom Cruise, is a military lawyer defending two U.S. Marines charged with killing a fellow Marine at the Guantanamo Bay Naval Base in Cuba. Although Caffey is known for seeking plea bargains, a fellow lawyer, Lieutenant Commander Joanne Galloway, uh, convinces him that the accused Marines were most likely carrying out an order from a commanding officer. Caffey takes a risk by calling Colonel Nathan R. Jessup to the stand in an effort to uncover the conspiracy. So, um, yeah, reading this, I these are a lot of things that... This movie came out when I was 10, and then maybe I saw it a couple years later when it was on TV or something, but a whole bunch of concepts that I was too young to understand. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be nice to uh, watch this movie and absorb everything and understand it. So, without further ado, guys, I'm excited for this one. Uh, again, A uh, Few Good Men, 1992, get a drink or a snack. Let's do this. Oh, man. It's almost like hazing or something. Oh, that was abrupt. Man, I can't remember the last time I've seen a movie with any of these big stars in it. These are Marines. It's like an honor guard. <laughs> oh, that's so cool, man. I'm requesting, um, Captain, I'd like to request... That was abrupt, too. That it be myself who's assigned. No, I'd like to request that it be I who am assigned. That it be I who am assigned. Man, I'm not, I'm not good with uh, Navy ranks for officers. I think Lieutenant Commander is like a major for all the other armed forces. And then a commander is like a lieutenant colonel. And then a captain is like a colonel. Captain West, this is Lieutenant Commander Galloway. Joe, you know Commander Lawrence? Yes, sir. Two Marines, a Lance Corporal Harold Dawson and a Private Loudon Downey, entered the barracks room of a PFC William Santiago and assaulted him. Santiago died at the base hospital approximately an hour later. The NIS agent who they were trying to prevent Santiago from naming Dawson in a fence line shooting incident. I was thinking it sounded an awful lot like a code red. Christ. Sir, I'd like to have them moved up to Washington and assigned counsel. Someone who possesses not only the legal skill, but a familiarity with the inner workings of the military. In short, Captain, I'd like to suggest that I be the one who that, uh, that it be me uh, who is assigned to represent them. Well, that practice, she didn't get it right. <laughs> she tried. Commander Galloway, why don't you get yourself a cup of coffee? Thank you, sir. I'm fine. Commander, I'd like you to leave the room so we can talk about you behind your back. <laughs> Certainly, sir. Oh, man. Code Marcus, red. Code red wasn't going on anymore. With the Marines, the Gitmo, who knows what the hell goes on down there. Well, we better find out before the rest of the world does. Damn thing could get messy. All right, what about this, uh, what, Commander Galloway? She disposed of three cases in two years. Three cases in two years? Who's she handling? The Rosenbergs? She's not cut out for litigation. She's a hell of an investigator, Jerry. When it comes to trial work, I think... I, think I know, I know. All passion, no street smarts. Bring her back in. This was all Greek to me as a kid. Now, with the job I'm in, I know exactly what they're talking about. 
They're saying she's not cut out as a litigator, meaning not good lawyer for trials. I'll have division assign them counsel. But not me. Sir, I think there might be more involved than that. Don't worry about it. I promise you, division will sign the right man for the job. All right, let's go. Let's get to. And it's in. A lieutenant. I'm going to charge him with possession and being under the influence while on duty. It was oregano, Dave. It was $10 worth of oregano. Yeah, well, your client thought it was marijuana. B misdemeanor, 20 days in the brig. C misdemeanor, 15 days restricted duty. I don't know why I'm agreeing to this. That's what they want. Um... Uh, Tom Cruise's character to do for this case that's coming up. Moving up in the world, been requested by division. Uh -oh. Question to do what? Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. A Marine corporal named Dawson illegally fires a round from his weapon over the fence line and into Cuban territory. EFC William Santiago threatens to rat on Dawson to the Naval Investigative Service. Dawson and another member of his squad, PFC Loudon Downey, go into Santiago's room, tie him up, stuff a rag down his throat, and an hour later, Santiago's dead. Attending physician says the rag was treated with some kind of toxin. He poisoned the rag? Not according to them. What do they say? Not much. They're being flown up here tomorrow, and on Wednesday at 0600, you'll catch a transport down to Cuba for the day to find out what you can. Seems important to division that this one be handled by the book, so I'm assigning co-counsel. Any volunteers? <laughs> it's gonna be that dude. No. Doing what? Cap, will have this done in about four days. Doing various administrative things. Backup. That's that Kevin Pollack dude. I've seen him in other movies, too. Hi. Hold on. Hi. Daniel Caffey, I was told to meet with, uh... He's crumpled up. Lieutenant Commander Galloway. That's a superior officer. He's supposed to show respect. You're the attorney division assigned? A young buck. I'm lead counsel to Sam Weinberg. I have no responsibilities here whatsoever. Come in, please. Lieutenant, how long have you been in the Navy? Going on nine months now. Wow. And how long have you been out of law school? A little over a year. I see. He successfully plea bargained 44 cases in nine months. <laughs> One more, I get a set of steak knives. Have you ever been in a courtroom? Commander, from what I understand, if this thing goes to court, they won't need a lawyer. They'll need a priest. No, they'll need a lawyer. One of the people we'll be seeing down there is the barracks CEO, Colonel Nathan Jessup. I assume you've heard of him. These are the letters that Santiago wrote in his eight months at Gitmo. He wanted to be transferred off the base. No one was listening. Finally, he wrote to the Naval Investigative Service, where he offered information about Corporal Dawson's fence line shooting in exchange for a transfer. Am I correct in assuming that these letters don't paint a flattering picture of Marine Corps life at Guantanamo Bay? Yes, and among... Am I further right in assuming that a protracted investigation of this incident might cause some embarrassment for the Security Council guy? Colonel Jessup... I... Twelve years. I'm sorry? I'll get them to drop the conspiracy and conduct unbecoming. Twelve years. You haven't talked to a witness or looked at a piece of paper. Pretty impressive, huh? You're gonna have to go deeper than that. Commander, do you have some sort of jurisdiction here that I should know about? My job is to make sure that you do your job. I'm special counsel for internal affairs, so my jurisdiction's pretty much in your face. Read the letters. I'll expect a report when you return from Cuba. Sure. He just explained why he was chosen. I always forget that part. The reasoning being, they don't want to embarrass uh, the colonel. I'm writing to inform you of my problems with my unit here in Cuba. I've fallen out on runs before for several reasons, such as feeling dizzy or nauseated. My sergeant grabbed me and pushed me down the hill. The last thing I remember is hitting the deck. I was told I just had heat exhaustion. I ask you to help me. Please, sir. I just need to be transferred out of RSC. Uh, off topic story, just because I see Marines eating, but um, when I joined the military in 99 or 2000, uh, I was going up to my recruiter's office uh, on a regular basis just to get things signed and filled out. One time I showed up, he wasn't there. Uh, all the other branches, we they had uh, offices next to each other, uh, recruiting offices. So the Marine guy comes out of his office, it was a sergeant. And he's like, get in here, I wanna show you something. So I was like, ah, screw it, let's go in there. Um, I go in there and he proceeds to eat two Whoppers from Burger King in under a minute. Um, <laughs> and as impressive as that was, unfortunately I didn't join the Marines. In exchange for my transfer off the base, I'm well, willing to provide you information, information about, about illegal the fence line shooting that occurred the night of August the 2nd. 
Who the f is PFC William T. Santiago? Private Santiago is a member of 2nd Platoon Bravo, sir. This kid broke the chain of command and ratted on a member of his unit to say nothing of the fact that he is a U.S. Marine and it would appear he can't run from here to there without collapsing from heat exhaustion. I can handle this situation, sir. The same way you handled the Curtis Bell incident? Sir, your methods doing... of leadership... Don't interrupt me, Lieutenant. I'm still your superior officer. And I'm yours, Matthew. Curtis Bell incident. I think Santiago should be transferred off the base immediately. He's that bad, huh? The word of this letter is bound to get out. He's going to get his ass whipped. Transfer Santiago. Yes, I'm sure that's the thing to do. I'm sure he's about to say something Wait. against that. Wait, I've got a better idea. Let's transfer the whole squad off the base. On second thought, windward. Let's transfer the whole windward division off the base. John, go on out there and get those boys down off the fence. They're packing their bags. Tom? Sir. Get me the president on the phone. We're surrendering our position in Cuba. <laughs> Smart Sir. ass. Wait a minute, Tom. Don't get the president just yet. Maybe we should consider this for a second. Maybe we have a responsibility as officers to train Santiago. And now I'm thinking, Colonel Markinson, that your suggestion of Transferring Santiago, while expeditious and certainly painless, might not be, in a manner of speaking, the American way. Santiago stays where he is. We're going to train the lad. John, you're in charge. Santiago doesn't make 4646 on his next proficiency in conduct report. And I'm going to blame you. Then I'm going to kill you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jesus, man. I think that's a mistake, Colonel. Uh, Matthew, I, I think I will have that word in private with you now. And I believe that taking a Marine who is not quite up to the job and shipping him off to another assignment puts lives in danger. Sit down, Matthew. Holberg Colonel versus a Lieutenant Colonel. We go back a while. We were commissioned together. We did our tours in Vietnam together. But I've been promoted up through the chain with greater speed and success than you have. If that's a source of tension or embarrassment for you, I don't give a shit. We're in the business of saving lives, Lieutenant Colonel Markinson. Don't ever question my orders in front of another officer. What can you do, man? It's the military. You can't file a complaint with HR, really? I guess Santiago tried to do the military version of that, and look what happened. Hal, is this Washington, D.C.? All right, let's move. Those are the two, uh, the PFC and the corporal. Oh. Lieutenant, would you be very insulted if I recommended to your supervisor that he assign different counsel? Because I don't think you're fit to handle the defense. You don't even know me. Ordinarily, it takes someone hours to discover I'm not fit to handle a defense. <laughs> you're wrong. I do know you. Daniel Alistair Caffey, born June 8, 1964, at Boston Mercy Hospital. Your father's Lionel Caffey, former Navy judge advocate and attorney general of the United States, died 1985. You went to Harvard Law, then you joined the Navy. Probably because that's what your father wanted you to do. And now you're just treading water for the three years you've got to serve in the JAG Corps. Just kind of laying low so you can get out and get a real job. But it's my feeling that if this case is handled in the same fast food, slick ass, Persian bazaar manner with which you seem to handle everything else, then something's gonna get missed. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I allowed Dawson and Downey to spend any more time in prison than absolutely necessary because their attorney had predetermined the path of least resistance. There's an awesome uh, monologue. Wow. I'm sexually aroused, Command. <sighs> Comments like that don't play well today. The doctor's report says that Santiago died of asphyxiation brought on by acute lactic acidosis and that the nature of the acidosis strongly suggests poison. Now, I don't know what that means, but it sounds pretty bad. It had to be Professor Plum in the library with the candlestick. I'm gonna talk to your supervisor. I was assigned by division, remember? Somebody over there thinks I'm a pretty good lawyer. I think I can handle things myself. You know what a code red is? What a pity. Yeah, I'm eager to see what that is too. Another little off-topic thing, the part where Caffey was saying he, uh, he was saying, you know, uh, acidosis or something, he's like, I have no idea what that means. Well, um, in my career field, I'm not an attorney, but, uh, I work with a bunch of, uh, personal injury attorneys who usually don't know crap about their clients. And it's kind of the same. That's similar. Officer on deck, 10, hut! Sir, Lance Corporal Harold W. Dawson, sir. 
Sir, PFC, Loudon Downey, sir. Is this your signature? Yes, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. Is this your signature? Sir, yes, sir. Sir, you don't need to do it twice in one sentence. What's code red? Sir, a code red is a disciplinary engagement. Sir, a Marine falls out of line. It's up to the men in his unit to get him back on track. What's a garden variety code red? Sir. Harold, you say sir, and I turn around and look for my father. By the way, that's not normal. In the military, you, you don't question someone who calls you sir. Um, that's how much uh, Lieutenant Kathy is kind of disregarding, you know, uh, military conduct. Sir, a Marine refuses to bathe on a regular basis. The men in his squad would give him a GI shower. Scrub brushes, Brillo pads, steel wool. Beautiful. Does, uh, he ever talk? Sir, PFC Downey will answer any direct questions you ask him. Uh, Private Downey, the rag you stuffed in Santiago's mouth, was there poison on it? No, sir. Silver polish, turpentine, antifreeze? No, sir. We were just going to shave his head, sir. When all of a sudden we saw blood dripping down his mouth, we pulled the tape off, and there was blood all down his face, sir. That's when Lance Corporal Dawson called the ambulance. Lance Corporal, the night of August 2nd, did you fire a shot across the fence line into Cuba? Yes, sir. Why? My mirror engaged, sir. For every American sentry post, there's a Cuban counterpart they're called mirrors. Santiago's letter to the NIS said you fired illegally. Oh, Harold, you see what I'm getting at? If Santiago didn't have anything on you, then why did you give him a code red? Because he broke the chain of command, sir. He went outside of his unit, sir. If he had a problem, he should have spoken to me, sir. Then a sergeant, then company commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then... Uh, all right, all right. What was your intent? To train him, sir. Train him to think of his unit before himself. All the chain to of command. To respect the code. What's the code? Not to be a rat. Unit, core, God, country. I beg your pardon? Unit, core, God, country. Sir. And you want me to go to the prosecutor with unit, core, God, country? That's our code, sir. It's your code. code. <laughs> Hey, there's Kevin Let's hope Bacon. for Dawson Downey's sake you practice law better than you play softball. What are we looking at? They plead guilty, we drop the conspiracy and the conduct on becoming 20 years, they're home and half that I want 12. Okay, this is the prosecutor. They killed a Marine. The rag was tested for poison, the autopsy lab reports. They all say the same thing, maybe, maybe not. This is his adversary, man. Mr. Uh, I forgot his name. Captain Kevin Bacon. I'm gonna give you the 12 years. Before you go getting yourself into trouble tomorrow, I think you should know the platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, held a meeting with the men and specifically told them not to touch Santiago. We have a deal? I'll talk to you when I get back. I feel like that's not true at all about Lieutenant Kendrick. By the way, I brought down some comic books he was asking for. Commander? You can call me Joanne. Joe? Yes. Joe, if you ever speak to a client of mine again without my permission, I have you disbarred. Friends? I had authorization. Now he's being From an where? attorney. Downey's closest living relative, Jenny Miller, aunt on his mother's side. You got authorization from Aunt Jenny? I gave her a call like you asked. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. That's some car, man. How's it going, Luther? Another day, another dollar, Captain. You got to play Miss A. Lay. So I've got my hill. Well, you got everything. See you tomorrow, Luther. Not if I see you first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these figures of speech. The battle of the figures of speech. Jack Ross came to see me today. He offered me the 12 years. That's what you wanted, right? I know, and I'll... I mean, I guess I'll take it up. Danny, take the 12 years. It's a gift. Of course he's not, or else we wouldn't have a movie. You know, Ross said the strangest thing to me right before I left. He said the platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, had a meeting with the men and specifically told him not to touch Santiago. I never mentioned Kendrick. I don't even know who he is. He's, he was throwing it out there that uh, they didn't have orders to do it. They just did it on their own. They went rogue, is what he's trying to say. Lieutenant Kathy Weinberg, Commander Galloway. I'm Corporal Barnes. I'm to escort you to the windward side of the base. That's the kid who's like the uh, assistant of Colonel Jessup. Just hop on the ferry. We'll be there in no time. Whoa, hold it. We got to take a boat to get to the other side of the bay. Nobody said anything about a boat. That's all. Jesus Christ, you're Kathy, Navy. you're in the Navy for crying out loud. Nobody likes her very much. <laughs> yes, sir. Nathan Jesse, come on in. Thank you, sir. I understand you had a meeting with your men that afternoon. Yes, I did. What did you guys talk about? Private Santiago was not to be harmed in any way. What time is that meeting? 1600. It's 4 o'clock. <laughs> 
things he should know. Yeah, that, I don't think that's the truth at all about what Lieutenant Kendrick was saying. We just got done seeing the that one scene where they're like, it's our job to train them as officers. Lieutenant Kendrick, may I call you John? No, you may not. Have I done something to offend you? No, I like all you Navy boys. Every time we gotta go someplace to fight, you fellas always give us a ride. Lieutenant Kendrick? Do you think Santiago was murdered? Private Santiago is dead. That is a tragedy. But he is dead because he had no code, because he had no honor. If he said he's dead because he has no code and no honor, that would mean Lieutenant Kendrick's troops had no honor because they disobeyed a direct order not to touch him, right? Colonel, I do have to ask you a couple of questions about September 6th. On the morning of the 6th, you were contacted by an NIS agent who said that Santiago had tipped him off to an illegal fence line shooting. Santiago is going to reveal the person's name in exchange for a transfer. Yes. If you feel there are any details that I'm missing, you should feel free to speak up. Thank you. <laughs> we agreed that for his own safety, Santiago should be transferred off the base. On the first available flight to the States, 0600 the next morning. How can you say you're, you know, a man died with no honor when you're all fucking liars? All right, that's all I have. Thanks very much for your time. The corporal's waiting outside with a jeep for you. He'll take you back. Yeah, you know what? I, you know, in the, I did another reaction where uh, I was talking about another officer uh, in the British military who, who lied. And same here, man. Not only are they soldiers um, where your code is, you know, integrity and honor. Um, but these are officers. So if, if it's an officer who lies, that's even worse, man. That is even worse. I'm just wondering if you've ever heard the term code red. I've heard the term, yes. This past February, Colonel, you received a cautionary memo from the commander in chief of the Atlantic fleet, warning that the practice of enlisted men disciplining their own wasn't to be condoned by officers. If I gave it its due attention. What is your point, Joe? My point is that I think Code Red still go on down here. Do Code Red still happen on this base, Colonel? Joe, the Colonel doesn't need to answer that. Yes, he does. No, he really doesn't. Yeah, he really does. You're the luckiest man in the world. There is nothing on this earth sexier, believe me, gentlemen, than a woman that you have to salute in the morning. Promote them all, I say, because this is true. If you haven't gotten a from a superior officer well you're just letting the best in life pass you by you know when i was uh, kathy said something mildly sexist in the beginning that's still not okay today but um this part where what the uh, colonel jessup just said intentionally you know said that to be uh like i don't give up you know this is what i think of your investigation that's what the way he used the sexism in this was blatant. You want to ask me about Code Red's off the record? I tell you it is an invaluable part of close infantry training. And if it happens to go on without my knowledge, so be it. You want to investigate me, roll the dice and take your chances. I eat breakfast 300 yards from 4,000 Cubans who are trained to kill me. So don't think for one second that you can come down here, flash a badge and make me nervous. Colonel, I just need a copy of Santiago's transfer order. You can have all the transfer orders that you want. But you have to ask me nicely. Oh, it's like that, huh? I beg your pardon? I don't want money, and I don't want medals. What I do want is for you to stand there in that white uniform and with your Jesus harbored Christ. mouth extend me some courtesy. Colonel Jessup, if it's not too much trouble, I'd like a copy of the transfer order. No problem. It's one problem with the military, man. People holding ranks like this that shouldn't. He's not deserving of Colonel, man. Thank him for his service, you know, in Vietnam and everything, but all this talk of honor, he does not carry himself with honor. Markinson's disappeared. Hmm, Lieutenant Colonel. When? This afternoon, sometime after we left. I'm Laden Downey's attorney. Aunt Jenny. Oh, she said she feels like she's known. She you. is now part of the team. But doesn't that like isn't there some kind of rule against that since she's internal affairs? She's an attorney uh, attorney for internal affairs. How does that now do they have to assign another person from IA to take her spot? 
Did Lieutenant Kendrick order you guys to give Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. Did he? Yes, sir. You mind telling me why the hell you never mentioned this before? You didn't ask us, sir. I get paid no matter how much time you spend in jail. Yes, sir. I know you do, sir. F*** you, <laughs> Harold. Hi. <sighs> Lieutenant Kendrick came to our room, ma'am. Mm. When? About 1620. And what happened then? Lieutenant Kendrick ordered us to give Santiago a code red. How long have you known about the order? Jack didn't know about the order, because if he did, he hadn't told us Jack knows, he'd be violating about 14 articles of the Code of Ethics. Look, Danny, Jessup's star is on the rise. Division will give me a lot of room on this one to spare Jessup and the Corps any embarrassment. How much room? I'll knock it all down to involuntary manslaughter, two years or home in six months. No deal, we're going to court. Joe. No, you're not. Why not? Because you'll lose, and Danny knows it. And he knows that if we do go to court, I'm gonna have to go all the way. That's the end of this negotiation. Man, this is this story is getting really good, man. Fellas, you hear what I just said? You're going home in six months. Yeah, but you're gonna be discharged. We can't do that. And sir. it's not. Do what? Make a deal, sir. What are you talking they about? They didn't do anything wrong. They, they followed orders. did nothing orders. wrong, sir. Yep. We did our job, and if that has consequences, then I'll accept it. Permission to speak. Jesus. What do we do then, sir? When? When you go home. After six months, we'll be dishonorably discharged, right, sir? Exactly. Probably. Not probably, you will. Now you're asking us to sign a piece of paper that says we have no honor. You're asking us to say we're not Marine. I believe I did my job, and I will not dishonor myself, my unit, or the Corps, so that I can go home in six months! You know who is dishonoring your unit and the Corps? Your commanding officers. These enlisted boys got more honor than their... <laughs> They're officers, man. I'm not gonna feel responsible for this, Harold. I did everything I could. You're going to Leavenworth for the better part of your life, and you know what? I don't give a What happened to saluting an officer when he leaves the room? He's not going to. <laughs> Leavenworth, that's not a fun okay, place, no. man. Tomorrow morning, I get them a new attorney. Why are you so afraid to be Look. a lawyer? Were daddy's expectations really that high? Dawson and Downey will have their day in court, but they'll have it with another lawyer. Another lawyer won't be good enough. They need you. You know how to win. You know they have a case, and you know how to win. Why do they need him? He's never... He's only done plea bargains. Don't tell me what I know and don't know I know the law! You know nothing about the law. You're a used car salesman, Daniel. You're an ambulance chaser with a rank. Like I said, he is very similar to the personal injury attorneys that I've dealt with. Look, if you want to take this to court, you're going to force me to file like nine kinds of discovery motions, and you're going to spend the better part of a year going blind on paperwork because a 90-year-old man misread the Delaware insurance. That's the kind of crap that I deal with. Uh, them two, man, the lieutenants, they're so new to the Navy still, they only have one ribbon. All right! Is it like the basic training ribbon? Does the defense wish to enter a plea? They're not guilty. Enter a plea of not guilty for the accused. We'll adjourn until 10 hundred, three weeks from today, at which time this general court-martial will reconvene. They're going to war, man. What is a lieutenant junior grade with nine months experience and a track record for plea bargaining get aside the murder case? Exactly, you knew why in the beginning. Would it be supposed, supposed to see the inside of a court? Yeah, he was never supposed to see a trial. So this is what a courtroom looks like. <laughs> I'm just wondering now that Joanne's on this, you know, I'm just wondering if you still need me. I need you. You're better at research than I am, and you know how to prepare a witness. He had doubts about being involved in this. I've got medical reports and Chinese food. I say we eat first. What? Did you get any Kung Pao chicken? Joe, talk to doctors, find out everything there is to know about lactic acidosis. That's that lactic acidosis. Don't flinch in front of the court members. Something doesn't go our way. Don't hang your head. Don't shift in your seat. Seriously. Whatever happens, hard, you man. have to look like it's exactly. Don't wear that perfume in court. Wrecks my concentration. Really? I was talking to Sam. <laughs> They've been working hard, man. I gotta get of course, he's nervous, but. You are gonna save our son, aren't you? Gonna try my best. I'll do my best. Hey, there we go. Danny, I'd like you to meet Jenny Miller, Alvin's aunt. Oh, that's Aunt Jenny. Your Aunt Jenny? Uh-huh. I'm sorry, I, I was expecting someone older. So was I. Ow! 
<laughs> oh boy. That was good, man. Wheelie Santiago is dead. Dawson and Downey killed him. This is the first time I think I've seen a, a movie with a military court. Other than when I saw it as a kid, my bad. If you're a Marine assigned to Rifle Security Company Windward, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, you're given an order. You follow it or you pack your bags. Corporal Carl Edward Hamaker, Marine Barracks, Rifle Security Company Windward, Second hey. Bravo. Corporal. That's Cuba we Gooding, man. Corporal, did Lieutenant Kendrick leave a standing order at that meeting? Sir, he said Santiago wasn't to be touched. Your witness. Corporal Hammerker, are you and Dawson in Downey's barracks room five minutes after this meeting? No, sir. Thanks. I have no more questions. Man, I'm loving this, man. This is, uh, this is so riveting. So cool to see it from a military perspective, too. Dr. Stone, what is lactic acidosis? If the muscles and other cells of the body burn sugar instead of oxygen, lactic acid is produced. That lactic acid is what caused Santiago's lungs to bleed. And what caused this process to be sped up in Santiago's muscles? An ingested poison of some kind. Your Honor, we object at this point. The witness is speculating. Dr. Stone, did Willie Santiago die of poisoning? Absolutely. Now, you're aware that the lab report and the coroner's report show no traces of poison. Yes, I am. Thank you, sir. All right, what's Kathy going to do? Is it possible for a person to have an affliction, some sort of condition, which might also speed up the process of acidosis? It's possible. What might some of those conditions mean? If a person had a coronary disorder or cerebral disorder, the process would be more rapid. Oh, and they found out he did have some kind of condition when they pulled his, like, medical records. Possible to have a serious coronary condition where the initial warning signals were so mild as to escape a physician during a routine medical exam? Possibly. There would still be symptoms, though. What kind of symptoms? Chest pains? Yes. Shortness of breath? Yes. Fatigue? Of course. He was falling out on his run. Doctor, is this your signature? Yes, it is. Would you read your handwritten remarks at the bottom of the page, please, sir? Initial testing, negative. Patient complains of chest pains, shortness of breath, and fatigue. Restricted from running distances over five miles for one week. See, and again, sorry to keep going off topic, but in my job, uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, medical professionals won't usually testify uh, when you question, you know, any of the medical records. Have you ever received a code red? Yes, sir. We were doing seven-man assault drills, and my weapon slipped. That night, the guys in my squad threw a blanket over me. Took turns punching me in the arm for five minutes. And then they poured glue on my hands. Was Private Santiago ever late for platoon meetings? Yes, sir. Was his barracks ever in disorder? Yes, sir. Did he ever fall back on a run? All the time, sir. Did he ever, prior to the night of September 6th, receive a code red? No, sir. You got a code red because your palms were sweaty. Why didn't Santiago, this burden to his unit, ever get one? Dawson wouldn't allow it, sir. The guys talked tough about Santiago, but they wouldn't go near him. They were too afraid of Dawson, sir. Captain Ross is going to ask you some questions now. Corporal Barnes, I hold here the Marine outline for recruit training. Are you familiar with this book? Yes, sir. Turn to the chapter that deals with code reds, please. <laughs> it wouldn't be in there. Sir? He knows it. He knows it's not in there. Corporal. Nice. Would you turn to the page in this book that like says that. where the mess hall is? <laughs> well, Lieutenant Caffey, that's not in the book, sir. Nice. You mean to say in all your time at Gitmo, you've never had a meal? Three squares a day, sir. <laughs> Eat that, Captain Kevin Bacon. <laughs> He's like, you got me. Seven to nine, we'll do a final Kendrick review. I want to slam dunk this guy. Caffey just had to get over his initial fears, man. Now he's got his, he's caught his stride. How's the big case going? Uh, there's the grindstone. No flies on you. More figures of speech. Well, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Say that again. It ain't yeah. over till the fat lady <laughs> sings. I knew he was going to do it. <laughs> Walked into that one. Oh, shoot. There he is. There's Markinson. <gasps> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. Are you aware you're under subpoena? Yes. I'm also aware that the lives of two Marines are in your hands. What do you know? I know everything. Was it a code red? Yes. Did Kendrick give the order? Yes. Did you witness it? I didn't need Did to. Did you witness it? No. And how do you know? I know. Yeah, you know He was never going to be transferred off that base. Jessup was going to keep him on the base. He said he wanted him trained. You've got the transfer order. It's got your signature. Yeah, I know. I signed him the morning you arrived in Cuba, five days after Santiago died. Ooh. 
I don't want a deal, and I don't want immunity. I want you to know that I'm proud neither of what I have done, nor of what I am doing. Wow, they found him, man. I can't believe he just popped up. I have markets here. Where is he? Motel room in Northeast with six federal marshals outside his door. Take a sip of your drink. Transfer the marks and signed. It's phony. In Jessup's statement that the 6 a.m. flight was the first available is a lie. We're checking the Tower Chief's log. Can I get you something? Like a beer, please. Now, I want you to acknowledge that the judge advocate has made you aware of the possible consequences involved in accusing a Marine officer of a felony without proper evidence. I've been so advised. You got bullied into that courtroom, Danny, by Dawson, by Galloway. You got bullied into that courtroom by the memory of a dead lawyer. Your dad. You're a lousy softball player, Jack. <laughs> the boys are going down, Danny. I can't stop it anymore. Lieutenant Kendrick, in your opinion, was Private Santiago a good Marine? I'd say he was about average. Lieutenant, you signed three proficiency in conduct reports on Santiago. On all three reports, you indicated a rating of below average. I did not see the need to trample on a man's grave. We appreciate that, but you're under oath now, and I think unpleasant as it may be, we'd all just soon hear the truth. I'm aware of my oath. You recall an incident involving a PFC Curtis Bell who oh, yeah. was found stealing liquor from the officers? We heard that name in the beginning. Yes, I do. Did you report Private Bell to your superiors? I remember thinking very highly of Private Bell and not wanting to see his record tarnished by a formal charge. You prefer to be handled with immunity. Yes, I most certainly did. Lieutenant, do you know what a code red is? Yes, I do. Have you ever ordered a code red? No, I have not. Lieutenant, did you order Dawson and two other men to make sure that Private Bell received no food or drink except water for a period of seven days? That is a distortion of the truth, Lieutenant. Private Bell was placed on barracks restriction, and I can assure you, at no time was his health in danger. Private Bell. <laughs> yeah, right? But you did order the barracks restriction, didn't you? You did order the denial of food. Yes, I did. Wouldn't this form of discipline be considered code red? No. Why not? Lieutenant Kendrick was Dawson given a rating of below average on this last report because you learned he'd been sneaking food to Private Bell. Object! Not so fast. Lieutenant? Lance Corporal Dawson was given a below average rating because he had committed a crime. What crime did he commit? Lance Corporal Dawson disobeyed an order. Yeah, it wasn't a real order, was it? After all, it's peacetime. He wasn't being asked to secure a hill or advance on a beachhead. A Marine, Dawson's intelligence, can be trusted to determine on his own which are the really important orders. I see what he's doing, man. Might say be morally questionable. Can Dawson determine on his own which orders he's going to follow? He's going to say no. No, he yep. cannot. A lesson he learned after the Curtis Bell incident, am I right? I would think so. He's cementing the fact that they would feel they have to follow an order. If you had ordered Dawson to give Santiago a code red... I specifically ordered those men... Is it reasonable to, to think Santiago. he would have disobeyed you again? Lieutenant, don't answer that. You don't have to, I'm through. Lieutenant Kendrick, did you order Lance Corporal Dawson and Private Downey to give Willie Santiago a code red? Lieutenant Kendrick, did no, you... No, I did not. Thank you. That was, he did a great job, man. I got the tower chief's log from that night. Jessup's telling the truth. It's gotta be doctored, man. It's gotta, they had to have doctored it. There was no flight at 11 o'clock. The first flight stateside left Guantanamo Bay at 2300. It arrived at Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, at a few minutes past two. Then why isn't it listed in the tower chief's log? Jessup. What are you telling me? He fixed the logbook? Yep. Sure as hell proved that one landed. Get the, the log. The yeah, get it from Andrews. You're not going to find anything in the Andrews. Unless they did him a favor. And... He can make an entire flight disappear? Nathan Jessup is about to be appointed director of operations for the National Security Council. Ugh. He's not going to be able to sidestep you. You don't still intend to put me on the stand. Thursday morning, 10 o'clock. He doesn't want to. He's going to help him, but he doesn't want to testify. He's got a code too, you know? Dear Mr. and Mrs. Santiago, I was William's executive officer. I knew your son vaguely, and seven men and two women whom you've never met will try to offer you an explanation as to why William is dead. For my part, I've done as much as I can to bring the truth to light. Wait, what? What is he doing? Your son is dead for only one reason. I wasn't strong enough to stop it. Always. Oh, no! No, man! Oh, no! Private, I want you to tell us one last time. Why did you go to Private Santiago's room? 
Well, hold on, man. They're, they're just continuing the <laughs> the narrative and the story after that. Hold on. Wow. Okay, so why did Mark Ensign do that? I mean, how are you going to write a letter, you know, saying you're so sorry, you, you know, when you could have went on the stand and fought for these two guys more? Why? Uh, I don't know. A code red was ordered by my platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan James Kendrick. How far is it from post 39 to the Windward Barracks? No, it's a ways, sir. How far by Jeep? About 10, 15 minutes, sir. The pickup private got a flat, sir, right at 39. He pulled up and bam, blow out with no spare. So we had to double time it back to the barracks. And if it's about 10 or 15 minutes by Jeep, I'm guessing it must be a good Oh, I see hour where he's going. Him, am I right? You can try to pickup say he, and me did it in 45 flats. He sir. wasn't there. Not bad. Your assault on Private Santiago, result of an order that Lieutenant Kendrick gave you in your barracks room at 1620, am I right? Yes, sir. You said that you didn't make it back to the Windward Barracks until 1645. Did you ever actually hear Lieutenant Kendrick order a code red? Well, Hal said that... Private, did Lance Corporal Dawson tell you to give Santiago a code red? Hal? Don't look at him! Hal? Private, answer the captain's question. Yes, Captain. I was given an order by my squad leader, Lance Corporal Harold W. Dawson, United States Marine Corps, and I followed it. What? But Dawson was given an order by Kendrick, right? <sighs> what? Oh, man, he, that, he fell apart on the stand. It was an order from Kendrick. It doesn't matter that he didn't hear it firsthand. He doesn't distinguish between the two. Okay, so yeah. Dawson was given a direct order by Kendrick. Oh, he's been drinking. Are you drunk? Pretty much. Yeah. Downey wasn't in his room. His eyes are too focused to be drunk. And I'm sorry, but we fix it and move on to Markinson. Do they know about Markinson? Markinson's dead. Yeah. He knows. We'll make a motion for a continuance 24 hours. Why would we want to do that? To subpoena Colonel Jessup. Oh, yeah. But he's going to have to take the stand to say that famous line. He told Kendrick to order the code red. He did? That's great. Why didn't you say so? And of course, you have proof of that. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. You were sick the day they taught law at law school. Accusing a highly decorated Marine officer of conspiracy and perjury. Lieutenant Caffey will have a long and prosperous career teaching typewriter maintenance at the Rocco Colombo School for Women. Thank you for playing. Should we or should we not follow the advice of the galactically stupid? Dang, man. That was a good show of emotion there. Good acting on that part. Nice monologue. I'm sorry I lost your set of steak knives. Ouch. Is your father proud of you? Don't do this to yourself. I'll bet he is. If I were Dawson and Downey and I had a choice between you or your father to represent me in this case, I'd choose you any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Motivation, man. Joanne, please get in the car. I'm going to put Jets up on the stand. Okay. He's got the motivation back, man. I think he wants to say that he made a command decision and that's the end of it. He eats breakfast 300 yards away from 4,000 Cubans that are trained to kill him. That's cool. Tom Cruise doing a Nicholson impression as part of the movie. Huh? What'd you see? Did he say he was going to wear the whites that day? Just to get under his skin? That's what he should do. What is he doing? What is this? Yeah, man, if you want to make your father, I know his father passed away, but if you want to make your father proud, just do the best you can if he's looking down and watching you. Sam, I need you to do something for me. What's going on? I gotta go out to Andrews. Oh, he's gonna try to find that logbook or something. And try to confirm that there was a flight at 2300 hours. Well, he didn't wear the whites that day. Where's Sam? He's on his way. Did he get the guys? Yeah. Defense calls Colonel Nathan Jessup. There he is. Look at all those ribbons, man. Colonel, when you learned of Santiago's letter to the NIS, you had a meeting with your two senior officers. Is that right? Yes. Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, the executive officer, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Markinson. And 
At present, Colonel Markinson is dead. Is that right? Objection. I'd like to know just what the defense counsel is implying. What do you think he's implying? implying? simply that at present, Colonel Markinson is not alive. Surely Colonel Jessup doesn't need to appear in this courtroom to confirm that information. Well, I just wasn't sure if the witness is aware that two days ago the colonel took his own life with a 45 caliber pistol. <laughs> court is aware. And now the court members are aware. They can ask him to... We thank you for bringing this to our attention. Move on. <laughs> that was very clever. Yes, sir. I told Kendrick to tell his men that Santiago wasn't to be touched. I ordered Markinson to have Santiago transferred off the base immediately. I felt his life might be in danger once word of the letter got out. Liar. Grave danger? Is there another kind? Colonel, we have the transfer order. You and Colonel Markinson co-signed ordering that Santiago be on a flight leaving Guantanamo at 6 the next morning. Was that the first flight off the base? The 0600 was the first flight off the base. No, it wasn't. I'm assuming that's what those other guys are there for. Did you wear that uniform on the plane? I wore utilities on the plane. You brought your dress uniform with you? Yes. A toothbrush, a shaving kit, change of underwear. Your Honor! Ah, uh, I see what he's doing. You better get somewhere fast with this, Lieutenant. He's gonna say yes, that sir. Colonel Santiago didn't have that stuff. I'm wondering why Santiago was impacked. Your Honor, these are the telephone records from Gitmo for September 6th. Not one call to his parents saying he was coming home. Not one call to a friend saying, can you pick me up at the airport? The fact is, there was no transfer order. Santiago wasn't going anywhere. He's going right for it. Colonel? Objection, Your Honor. It's obvious that Lieutenant Caffey's intention this afternoon is to smear a high-ranking Marine officer. My recommendation, sir, that Lieutenant Caffey be reprimanded for his conduct and the witness be excused with the court's deepest apology. Overruled. Your Honor. Your objection is noted. Nice. These two Marines are on trial for their lives. Please tell me that their lawyer hasn't pinned their hopes to a phone bill. He's, he's just asking for it, man. Do you have any other questions for me, Counselor? He's like telegraphing that you could get me and you don't, you're not coming at me with the right info. Lieutenant Caffey. He's gonna go for it, obviously. We have to get to that famous line. Thanks, Danny. I love Washington. Excuse me. I didn't dismiss you. I beg your pardon. I'm not through with my examination. Sit down. <laughs> Colonel, I'd appreciate if he would dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've earned it. Defense counsel will address the witness as Colonel or Sir. I don't know what the hell kind of unit you're running here. And the witness will address this court as Judge or Your Honor. I'm quite certain I've earned it. That's right. That's right. Guantanamo log lists no flight that left at 11 p.m. and the Andrews log lists no flight that landed at 2 a.m. I'd like to admit them as defense exhibits Alpha and Bravo. I don't understand. You're admitting evidence of a flight that never existed. Well, we believe it did, sir. Defense will be calling Airman Cecil O'Malley and Airman Anthony Rodriguez. They were working the ground crew at Andrews at 2 a.m. on the 7th. Your Honor, these men weren't on the list. Rebuttal witnesses, Your Honor, called specifically to refute testimony offered under direct examination. I'll allow the witnesses. This is ridiculous. Colonel, a moment ago... It's ridiculous that you're lying. A moment ago, you said that you ordered Lieutenant Kendrick to tell his men that Santiago wasn't to be touched. That's right. And Lieutenant Kendrick was clear on what you wanted? Crystal. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick ignored the order? Ignored the order? No. We follow orders or people die. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Are we clear? Crystal. Use this. <laughs> Colonel, I have just one this more question good. before I call Airman O'Malley and Airman Rodriguez. By the way, those airmen are my guys, man. If you gave an order, Santiago wasn't to be touched. And your orders are always followed. And why would Santiago be in danger? Mm -hmm. Why would it be necessary to transfer him off the base? That is an excellent point. Think about that one, Colonel. You said he was being transferred because he was in grave danger. That's correct. You said I... he was in danger. I said grave danger. You said, is there I any I recall other... what I, I said. I can have the court reporter read back to you. I know court. what I said. I don't have to have it read back to me like I'm... Why the two orders? orders? Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. No, sir. You made it clear just a moment ago that your men never take matters in their own hands. Your men follow orders or people die. So Santiago shouldn't have been in any danger at all, should he have, Colonel? You snotty little bastard. Oh, whoa. Oh, my God, I love this. Lieutenant Kendrick ordered the code red, didn't he? Because that's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do. Object! And when it went bad, you cut cases. these guys loose! Your Honor, you had Marcus inside the phony transfer. Your Honor, you doctored the logbook. Damn it, Captain! You coerced the doctor. Consider yourself in contempt. Colonel Jessup, 
Did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You them. want answers! I Here it is. the truth! You can't handle the truth! <laughs> yes. Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men oh, with guns. Man. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. Not only is he gonna be, like, saying, you're not worth crap, Kathy, he has to throw Weinberg in there, too. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. Which you're freaking... Ugh, which you're not even... That's so dishonorable to... Do all the things you did. It's so hypocritical. You use them as a punchline. So do you. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Wow. Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did. Oh my god, this <laughs> Oh, he did it! <laughs> he did it. I suggest the members be dismissed so that we can move to an immediate Article 39A session. The witness has rights. Captain Ross. He got him. Jack? The members of the court will retire to an anteroom until further instructed. Oh, god, he got him. What the hell is this? Colonel, what's going on? I did my job, I do it again. I'm gonna get on a plane and go on back to my base. No, you're not. You're not going anywhere, Colonel. MPs, guard the Colonel. Captain Ross. What the hell is this? Colonel Jessup, you have the right to remain silent. If I'm being charged with a crime. A trial by court is that what this is? I'm being charged with a crime? Right to this is me. funny. This lawyer may be a civilian That's what this is. You were told that code reds were not to be permitted. I'm gonna rip the eyes out of your head and piss at your dead skull! You f with the wrong marine! Control yourself. All you did was weaken a country today, Kathy. You put people's lives in danger. Sweet dreams, son. Don't call me son. I'm a lawyer and an officer in the United States Navy. And you're under arrest, you son of a bitch. You gave the order that one of your own troops was killed. You gave an order that was an illegal order. That was, oh man, that was filmmaking All excellence. Rise. Oh wow, that was such a good scene. On the charge of murder, the members find the accused not guilty. On the charge of conspiracy to commit murder, not guilty. The members find the accused not guilty. I feel like they're gonna have something down the road that's gonna say guilty. On the charge of guilty. conduct unbecoming a United States Marine, oh, guilty. The members find the accused. Guilty as charged. Conduct unbecoming. The accused are hereby sentenced to time already served, and you are ordered to be dishonorably discharged oh. from the Marine Corps. Court Martial is adjourned. <sighs> All right. There's no way around it. You can't punish the, you know, Colonel Jessup for um, the use of code reds if you're not going to also punish them, uh, because across the board, everyone knows. Uh, code reds are not to be, you know, they're not, they can't be condoned. There's, you can't get around that. What does that mean? Your service is over. How? Your watch has ended. What did we do wrong? We did nothing wrong! You knew. Yeah, we did. You knew that was not the right thing to we do. We were supposed to fight for people who couldn't fight for themselves. Supposed to fight for Willie. This is the best result that they could have got. You don't need to wear a patch in your arm to have honor. Ten hut! There's an officer on deck. Give him that slip back. All right. Very nice. Chairman Cecil O'Malley and Anthony Rodriguez, what exactly were these guys going to testify to? They had absolutely no recollection of anything. Strong witnesses. Handsome Ooh. to it, you think? Ooh, wow, they were just there I'll as a threat. Right. Oh man, he brought the airmen there just as a, a a visual threat. They didn't know anything. Oh, that's genius, man. 
Wow. What an amazing film, man. Look at that cast. Oh, God. Great job across the board, man. Well, we just got done watching A Few Good Men, and holy crap. Excellent film, man. I love this so much. Oh, that last courtroom scene, man, with Jessa Nicholson, who's acting on that part, was fantastic. That scene, I see why, you know, that's such a popular line, you can't handle the truth. It's one of the most iconic scenes I've ever seen, man. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was giving me chills watching that. Um, so cool to, uh, if not a little predictable, so cool to see uh, the evolution of Tom Cruise's character kind of going from this uh, punk kid, basically what um, Galloway called him, an ambulance chaser. Yeah, that's kind of the, the attitude that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, my experience working with personal injury attorneys, same way, man, you know, just looking for the quickest out, don't even know crap about their clients. Even though they have all the medical records, they still don't read them. You know, they only look for the, the highlights. Oh yeah, well, my client had this, yeah, let's, give me this much money and I'll get out of your way. We won't have to go to a lawsuit, which in most cases, a lot of those guys really don't want to go to a lawsuit because like Kathy, they've never seen the inside of a courtroom either. But um, I'm getting sidetracked, but it was cool to see uh, Kathy's evolution as uh, being that kind of punk uh, lawyer just out of um, law school, just out of boot camp, you know, nine months in the Navy to uh, taking up the mantle if not even surpassing the legend of his father. Um, and that legend of his father is kind of also not only a motivator, but also kind of what was making him afraid and holding him back. You know, um, you know Nicholson in the beginning, when uh, Galloway, Weinberg, and Kathy first went to Guantanamo, uh, with the part where he was talking about, well, okay, the, the sexual um, harassment thing he said was... If, to show how much of a prick his character is, that line was so good. It was just so blatant. Like, I don't respect you guys. Yes, I'm going to sexually harass you to your face. Uh, and, you know, what are you going to do about it? That that was one of the moments in this movie that really cemented, you know, uh, drew lines in the sand, you know, what side people are on. Um, and, you know, I think when uh, Tom Cruise or Kathy was drunk and he was like screaming. He's starting to get belligerent, screaming in Galloway's face. That was another great moment in this movie. Uh, so many other great moments. It's, you know, putting me on the spot now, trying to think of all the different moments I liked. Um, there, I, I can't think of other examples at this time, but so many good moments. Oh yeah, another moment when um, Dawson, when they first got arrested and uh, he, was, he was saying like, uh, you know, I'm going to get paid no matter what happens to you is what Kathy was saying. And Dawson's acting. He's like, yes, sir. I know you, you will, sir. That was excellent too, man. So much good acting in this. Uh, Rob Reiner is the man. This movie was excellent all the way around. Definitely a classic. Um, I forgot to say my rating. I would give this movie, I'd rate this movie in nine. You know, I almost said 9.5, but I got to keep things into perspective um, it was a great movie all around. I have no complaints on it, but I mean, you know, my favorite movie I've ever seen still to this day is Saving Private Ryan. That's a movie that I would rate a 10. Uh, while this movie was awesome and I loved it, not the same impact that, you know, that movie gave me. So I got to keep things in perspective. Great movie. Fantastic. No complaints. That being said, it's still a nine, not a 10. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Thank you if you're still here. Uh, you know, Thank you for taking the time to hang out with me and uh, enjoy this movie with me. If you guys have any other movies or shows you want me to check out, let me know in the comments. If there's anything you think I missed, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you again, guys. We'll see you on the next one.